and hi YouTube welcome back to truth about the past today we have Mr. Jimmy Thomas he was a singer with the Ike and Tina Turner Review hey Mr. Thomas hello how's everybody doing wonderful doing thank you so let's start um up on your childhood and how you got to start singing and what inspired you to start singing okay well, uh, my child, I was born in a, in a town called Osceola in Arkansas. Uh, it's about 50 miles from Memphis on the Arkansas side of the Mississippi River. Um, and uh, I went to school at a, uh, a school called Rosenwald School. And uh, after I graduated, uh, the blues man Albert King, who also lived in my town, had uh, moved to St. Louis. He had a very successful band in St. Louis. He left Osceola. He was a good friend with Ike Turner. And Ike Turner, um, well, he told Ike Turner about me. He had a boy that was a boy in Osceola who was a, was a good singer, and he think that he should uh, have a look. So he would send Albert to Osceola, pick me up, bring me back to St. Louis, introduce me, and we became, yeah, that was good. It was really good because I was a young kid and I was doing all the teenage type stuff that um, teenagers do. I mean, I was into Chuck Berry and all the doo wop stuff. Um, but Ike's band at that time was, it was pretty hardcore R&B and, and blues and that, and that kind of thing. But it was it was uh, Ike was a very flexible guy. He was quite happy to have a young guy like myself because um, it drew in a lot of the white kids. You know, they like the rock stuff. You know, they like the um, they was really into the Chuck Berry. I would do all I would do all kind of stuff. Anyway, uh, he hired another guy called. Uh, um, Oh God, what's his name? Um, he had a big voice, this guy. Anyway, he was from St. Louis as well. But anyway, he, Tommy Hodge, that was his name, Tommy Hodges. Anyway, Tommy and myself um, were the singers at that time. And uh, Art Lasseter was supposed to come and, and join Ike right, before Tommy. This is, I was still in the band. I was still, you know, there. And uh, but Art turned up, and he was. They, they wrote the song "A Fool in Love," uh, and Art didn't turn up for the session, for the recording session. Mm -hmm. Tina did. Tina was called Anne, and she was the sister. Her sister's name was Aline. Aline mm -hmm. was. Uh, the girlfriend of the tenor sax player, who was Raymond Hill at the time, who also uh, came from Clarksdale, Mississippi with Ike. So Jackie Brinson, Ike Turner, uh, Raymond Hill, Eddie Jones, all those guys was uh, together as a band. Uh, so Tina came from, she was, she was too young, myself and Tina was a bit too young to to go into the nightclub, et cetera. But Tina would come and sit on the side of the bandstand occasionally. And um, uh, when I was playing one night, uh, Aline kept telling us she can sing. And um, so I passed her the mic on some song, apparently. This was just before I got in the band. And uh, she broke loose and he heard her voice. So when I got there and I was introduced to her, this was like later on, some months later, uh, she was still a little Ann. We called her little Ann. And uh, she wasn't in the band all the time. She would just occasionally turn up. So like I said, in those days, you couldn't get in the club unless you were like uh, 21. Uh, but myself, because I was a guy, I could I had a slight little mustache, so I could darken that up a little bit with charcoal a little bit. 
I could look a little bit older, put on, you know, put on the suit, and uh, I'd come in okay, be part of the band. <laughs> Tina would turn up, dress a little older, and she'd set it aside, and uh, I could pass her the mic, she'd sing. So it, eventually, uh, she got on, she, you know, allowed her to come on stage. And uh, so Tina, which you like I said, and then she come up and sing a few songs. And um, I do my bit, she do her bit. And uh, Art Lassen was supposed to come, like I said, at that time. And uh, he didn't turn up with the session. Tina sung the song. Is the that studio. why that part was so high when she sung that part on Fool in Love? Yes, because it was the, it was written for for him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, that's the way it, it had been rehearsed. And she said, she, I mean, she could sing it in that key, so she did. Um, I think, I'm not sure if they did change it all to the key slightly. I can't quite remember that. That mm -hmm. might have happened, you know, because she was, uh, the way he sung it, he had a voice kind of like Ray Charles. That's why he, I mean, she, uh, I phrased it exactly the way he was phrasing it at rehearsals. You know, mm -hmm. that, yeah, 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 yeah. which is, that's the way he sung. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where she got that from. Anyway, um, the two girls, uh, three girls, that was uh, the backing singers on the record, uh, which were his backing singers, mm -hmm. our last backing singers on his gigs. They were called the Artettes. So the okay. Artettes and Aunt on the song. And um, once the song, when I got the deal with Juggy Murray from uh, Sue Records in New York and uh, would change Ann's name to Tina. And I couldn't go on the road as Ike Turner's band featuring Lil Ann, kind of, that kind of, it's just you know, too cumbersome. So yeah. they called themselves Ike and Tina Turner. Now at that time, Ike was uh, involved with the, uh, another lady. They weren't married. To my Lorraine. The lady. Yeah, you know about Lorraine, my God. Yes, that's you Ike Jr. Things. and Michael's mother. Oh, that's right, yeah, of course, of course, you told me, that's right, yes. Exactly right, yes. So uh, anyway, so after that, there was a political move, when I say political, there was a a career move mm -hmm. when I married Ann, right? Because uh, they married in uh, Vegas. And uh, that was a career move because, you know, it was uh, having working under the name Ike and Tina Turner, and they weren't married. And I think anybody, yeah, Ike was, he was quite paranoid about things like that. Anyway, mm -hmm. somebody talked to me, hey, you better marry that girl because. You know, hey, he getting really popular nationally and everything. Anyway, they did. So one morning we woke up and they had gone to um, somewhere in Vegas and got married. Mm -hmm. um, God, something just come up. No, you got it. We can see you. I can't see you now. The account owner is watching this video. Let me just push this. Okay, I'm you back now. Uh, yeah, so anyway, after they got married, um, the show really did, you know, hit, hit big time. When I say big time, it really started to really rock. Yeah. And uh, we got the girl, the original girl that we started out with couldn't stay on the road with us. Uh, they had commitments back in St. Louis. And so now, for a while. Okay. Uh -huh. Is this them? No, no, that was that was made. That I tell you that that's hang on, put it back up. I'll show you who that is. Okay, uh, in the center. That's Tina, Tina. isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, that's Tina in the center. In the front uh, was Eloise, Eloise Hester, right? Uh, she was from Los Angeles, and the one at the top of the picture was uh, um, Wilhelmina. A girl called Wilhelmina was from, oh, where was Wilhelmina from? I think she was from D.C. Anyway, I did a, I did a couple songs with her. And it was oh, okay. Jenny and Jenny. 
we became, we became Jimmy and Gene for Sue Records. And um, anyway, those were, that was the backing. That was the Ike and Tina review at that time. Mm -hmm. That was before uh, Robbie and Jesse, all, they all, Robbie came back on the road and joined us. And Jesse Smith came from St. Louis. She also joined us. Uh, and Vanessa joined us. Now, in between all that time, there was um, an, a white girl from mm -hmm. East, from St. Louis, that yes. was working with us for a while. Uh, Bunny. Right? Yes. I don't know if you, yeah, you know about Bunny, okay. And also we had uh, Vernon Guy mm -hmm. and Stacy Johnson. These guys were great guys, you know, it was from St. Louis as well. And so when they had Bobby John, myself, Vernon and Stacy, we was hot and I guess that's when that was as far as I'm concerned, that was the peak of the thing. We was smoking. And um <laughs> by the time uh, let's see, by the time uh they joined and we got another girl from Dallas. And uh she had oh man, she had a another really incredible voice. She was on a song that they did uh, for Atco Atlantic uh, for the Ike it's called the Gong Gong song. You know, yeah. the okay. gong, you, you probably heard it, the uh -huh. Gong Gong. Yes. Uh, yeah, you know the one. Okay, so that that group of Ike it's was very, I mean, all the Ike it's, all the groups of Ike it's was very good. They were very good at choosing uh, girls that had great voices. Yes, they did. Uh, so when that group left, they usually drop out one by one, sometimes two, one, however. Whenever there would be a gap, then myself and Bobby John would we'll step in. Have, we'd step in and do the backing for the, you know, yeah, that's, that's right. And uh, so that's how the glue of the, of the whole show was like that. Now, but was you there we, when Ann Thomas came? Yeah. Oh, so you sung with her too? Well, Ann Thomas didn't sing. I'm doing well as lip singing, but was you there too yeah, in the little mix? Yeah, absolutely. I was there all the time. Oh, okay. I was the part of the furniture, like I can see the Turner, that was me. That was it. I mean, we were like uh, forever. That was, I watched everybody come and go. Uh, Anyway, uh, yeah, Ann Thomas, yeah, I remember Ann Thomas very well. She was really nice, really lovely. Now, really was that her hair, or did everybody had to wear wigs back in those days? In those days, the wig was the thing, because I had this idea of having long hair, popping hair on the stage was great. <laughs> I mean, they made, he liked the idea of um, the visual part of when the girls were doing that fast, that hard dancing and stuff, and they snap their head and and so you can only do it with wigs, you know what I mean? That's why everybody wore wigs. It was a part of the uniform, basically. Yeah. And, uh, and um, yeah. That, um, Shelly Clark told us about how she had on a ring, and they yeah. went down, and they came back up, and the ring had snacks on her hair, and had took some of it out. Yeah, that's possible. I, I can't remember that, but in so many episodes, so many little things happened. Yeah, I'm sure that happened. Um. Yeah, so many things, so many things. Wow, that's funny because you know you see a lot of those wigs, and they had some pretty fancy. To me, I like the wigs back then because they was more thicker and fuller than the wigs today. But yes, and big. Yeah. But you know, for Tina not to have no hair under them wigs, I know her scalp was on fire. Well, the thing, yeah, that's right. Tina's hair. I, I don't remember what happened while Tina. Hair was, uh, I think she, but she went had a perm put on her head or bleach, uh huh. And that young girl left it on too long and it fell out. That's and then what it was. Said, now you know you need her. Yeah, you know you need a wig. <laughs> Can't go on there bow. <laughs> That's it, exactly. But uh, no, I mean, yeah, Tina, Tina's hair was, yeah, it was very, but it's still, when she didn't wear a wig, her hair looked great. She should have just curled bad. it. No. That's right. I mean, because if you look in those pictures, that picture you just said up there just a while ago, where she's in the, sitting in the center, that's her hair. That's not the wig. Well, she has some beautiful hair then. That's yeah, what I'm telling they you. Yeah, like a little, they a little swoop, swoop. Uh huh. Yeah, there you go. I mean, when she fixed her hair, it looked fine. 
It was I tried idea to do this you know, the hair popping thing. Mm-hmm. You can only do that with wigs, you know, long hair wigs. And, and you what, had to have them on real good too, because I remember in the video, um, they was backstage in the dressing room, and Tina was pinning in her wig. I mean, she yeah. had a whole bunch of pins yeah. and tightness to where that wig was not coming. You go down, whoop, you come back up, and you bow. You had to snap back. Yeah, exactly. You'd have to, you have to really put it in that good. So yeah, they became they was experts at that fixing and fixing those wigs on and things. Yeah. Now, do you yeah. remember a song called "I Can't Believe What You Say, But I See What You Do"? Yes, very well. Yeah, very much. Yes. Can't How was that song made? If you can remember. I can't remember. <laughs> mm-hmm. So now. Okay. Um, when you first heard Tina, did you think her voice was being strained and being pushed out? Did, did people like no, that? I, no, no, I didn't think that at all. I, when I first heard her voice, I just knew that she had she had one of those rough voices. Mm-hmm. You know, she had one of those gutty, uh, gutty voices that she she had that naturally, and it, it wasn't strained. But a lot of people thought she was straining. A lot of a lot of other people, especially around St. Louis. Uh, thought she was straining too hard, uh, but those of us who were working with her knew that that's just she had that kind of voice. Yeah, that that big voice. Yes, mm-hmm. very gravelly. Yes. Now, um... that's what impressed I so much as a young girl sitting beside the stage and when he passed her the mic. That's what blew all of them away. As soon as she voice. started to sing, that kind of voice. You know what I mean? It was unusual. Yeah. Her voice was. Wow. Now, could, can you remember um, certain like times that you like will never forget, like a road trip story or like a hotel story or a group, you know, you know like yesterday you talked about the gospel groups. Like, can, is that just something, a memory that you just will always cherish in the review? Uh, I didn't quite get that question. Did I remember what? Is there a memory that you will always cherish from the review, like a certain day or a certain time? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a lot of them. But uh, I think my favorite one would be uh, when we were playing Miami. Uh, mm-hmm. And we were, playing, we were staying at a hotel at that time called the Sir John Hotel. And in town, staying at the same hotel was Sam Cook, right? And uh, Sam... Sam was uh, performing somewhere. Anyway, he had a few off days and so did we. We had a few days off. And uh, playing a few blocks away in a like a community center kind of place was, uh, let's see, it was little Willie John who was in town. He was, he was there as well. And so there was, our, there was us staying at the Sir John. There was Sam Cook there and uh, little Willie John. And Sam was performing at this particular place. And uh, we all went out to see Sam, uh, me, Tina, and the girls and I. Uh, and uh, because they was at the hotel and everything, so they knew we were there. So they invited us, hey, come down to me. Yeah, 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 we'll be down. And we turned up and Lou Willie John turned up, who was also there. And wow, that was a night. Believe me, that was a night. And look, I've been to, as I grew up, I've been to churches and I've been to all kinds of things as well. Singing, I mean, I've heard all this stuff, you know, five blind boys from Mississippi, Alabama. I've, I've had the goose pimples and all the stuff that everybody get when you get that spirit. But that night, uh, Sam, at the time, I think the his number one hit at that time was Bring It On Home To Me. And he was singing it here. So he said, oh yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we got, I said, hey, we got Ike and Tina Turner. It's in, it's in the house. Yeah, come on up. Join, come on up on the stage with me. So we went up. Tina, I, the girls brought us up there. And uh, and said, oh, wow, look, Willie. Willie John was there. And he come right flying up on the stage. He was always kind of boisterous. And uh, wow, man. So Sam started the song. If you ever change your mind. You know the song. My God. And Tina took a part. And then Lou Willie John took a part. And they sung. And we was backing. And we was all singing. And the house 
it was just too hot in there. It was just too much. It was, it was, the house burned down. It was just so hot. It was a bad, the man, I swear, that was the most powerful gig. It, I mean, it was just, I can't describe that. And that was a moment in my life that I will never, never forget. Goose pimples, a whole lot, everything, everything, everything that you can think of that puts you in that spirit, in that space, you know, that special place you go when the spirit hits you. That was one of those times. Uh, another time that uh, I can remember very vividly is I was on stage. Let's see, we was doing the Apollo, the Apollo in New York, in Harlem. And uh, I was singing a Brooke Benton song. I was singing uh, the Bow Weevil. And um, this was at the, the Midnight Show, what they call the Midnight Show. Now, the Midnight Show, I'm singing the song, and they had this one spotlight on me. So the place was black, dark. I couldn't see anything except that one beady spotlight that was in my eye. I couldn't see the audience. I couldn't see any, you know, I, I, when you black the audience on that one spot. That's where that spotlight was on me. And I'm, on the, I'm in the middle of the stage singing the song. And suddenly I heard Ike in the background laughing. Now Ike had a laugh like, uh, if you heard him laugh, you'd have to laugh too, even if you didn't know what he was laughing at because he had that crazy laugh. It was like a, yay, yay. He sounded like a donkey or something baying. Anyway, um, <laughs> I could hear this in the background. So, it's kind of putting me on wondering what the hell was he laughing about. So then I heard the audience kind of start to laugh a little bit. And I'm thinking, but I know I'm 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 raised, I'm kicking ass here. What, what were they laughing at? I'm wondering myself. <laughs> I never see anything. Um so I wondered, I felt down, I thought, is my fly undone or, or what? You know, no, trousers was done up all right. I'm rubbing, I'm thinking, okay. Um and, and suddenly I feel this big hand on my shoulder. Boom. This hand out of the darkness. And I looked up and it was Brooke Benton. I hear a Brooke Benton. I'm singing this song. I'm on it. Oh my God. You can imagine me. I mean, I'm just I'm just a young kid for me. I mean, Brooke Benton. I'm on the stage at the Apollo singing this song, spotlight on me, and there he is standing behind me. And that's why they was laughing. Because I didn't, I couldn't see that, you know what I mean? But he's standing behind me making faces. And he put his hand on my shoulder, my God. <laughs> and he, me and him sung the song out. That was that was brilliant. That was absolutely brilliant. Uh, I had a lot of moments like that with him, honestly. So I bet it we, was very we interesting. Yeah. Uh, you know, touring that with oh, Curtis Mayfield, Motown people, you know, all those groups, Temptations, now, um, you name I it. Bring up, uh, I I've lost the sound. I want to bring up a certain time. I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Turn it up more. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, but it's very, very faint. I don't know why. Um, I want to bring, can you hear me now? No? Can you hear me now? I stick, that was very faint. Um, okay, well, I want to bring up, um. I can hear you, but it's so faint that I can't. Hello? Hello. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Can you hear me now? Oh, uh, yeah, I can hear you, but it's really, really faint. Uh, what about now? Oh, my volume's up. Okay. What about now? Up. What about now? I can't hear you. Can you, you can still hear me all right, though, yeah? Yes, no. sir. Okay. Right. Well, I don't know what's 
why the sound went, but it used to be good. Let me push something. Let me look at the bottom. Nothing has changed. Well, the um microphone. The time meeting is running out anyway, so we're we're gonna have to start a the new microphone meeting. Microphone is stopped. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. We can hear you. We just can't see you. Can you hear I me? Can hear you, but it's just it's just so faint. Huh. I don't know why it's so faint, but our Zoom That's meeting true. time is getting ready to okay. go out. <laughs> Microphone is unmuted. <laughs> I, I, I can't hear a thing. You can't hear us at all? Don't forget to say again. I said, you can't yeah. hear me at all? Yeah, I put it up to my ear now. I can, I can hear you, yeah. But oh, it's very okay. Faint. Okay, so what, our time is our timing is, is running out. So what we're going to do, we're going to start a new meeting, okay? And I'm going to send you okay. the link. Okay. Okay, so, so we will adjourn here in a few minutes. All right. Okay. All right.